the life and sad ending of Kathy Bates. We are born in this world with the arrangement of creation. Kathy Bates was born Kathleen Doyle Bates on June 28, 1948, in Memphis, Tennessee, to Berta Kathleen and Langdon Doyle Bates. While her mother was a homemaker, her father was employed as a mechanical engineer. She was the youngest of three daughters born to the couple. She completed her formal education at White Station High School. It was while at school that she discovered her hidden talent and affinity for acting. With an aim to make a career out of the talent, she enrolled in the Southern Methodist University. She graduated from university in 1969, majoring in theater and drama. At university, she was a prominent member of the Alpha Delta Pi sorority. Completing her education, she moved to New York to pursue a career in acting. Meanwhile, she took up odd jobs in the city to survive and make a living. From working as a singing waiter in a famous resort to working in a cashier in New York's museums, she did not shy away from menial works. She first secured a role for herself at the opposite Christopher Walken at Buffalo Studio Arena Theater in Lanford Wilson's world premiere of Lemon Sky. However, to her dismay, the show relocated to New York's off-Broadway Playhouse Theater without her. Not the one to be disheartened quickly, she did not give up. By the mid-70s, she gained a name for herself in rising popularity among New York's regional theater scene by some exceptional performances in shows like Casserole and Equality of Mercy. Meanwhile, she made a foray into the big screen with the film Taking Off. However, she was wrongly credited as Bobo Bates. Continuing in theater, it was her performance as Joanne in the theater show Vanities to proclaim her fame. The show highlighted her acting prowess and immense talent as a performer. She earned her first Broadway performance in the 80s show Goodbye Fidel. Lasting only six performances, she followed this up by taking a replacement role in the well-established and highly successful drama Fifth of July in 1981. She starred opposite Kareem Black and Cher in Robert Altman-directed theatrical release Come Back to the Five and Dime, Jimmy Dean, Jimmy Dean. The success of the drama led to the release of the film version of the same in 1982. The film would earn her her first big screen success and the audience now would recognize and notice her name. In 1983, she starred in the Pulitzer Prize winning play Night Mother opposite Anna Poniak. The show earned her her first Tony Award. She followed up with Off-Broadway and Terrence McKinley's Frankie and Johnny in the Claire de Lune, the later of which ran for 533 performances. In 1988, she succeeded Amy Irving in the Off-Broadway production of The Road to Mecca. Despite having a super successful theater career, the big screen fame eluded her. She failed to receive any offers to portray her award-winning stage characters on screen. Eventually, in 1990, luck smiled on her and she begged the role of the obsessed fan Annie Wilkes who kidnaps her favorite author and subjects him to a series of horrific tortures in the film Misery. It's awesome. Her exceptional performance and penache for acting not only won her critical acclaim and popularity, but the prestigious Academy Award as well. Other films released of the year include Dick Tracy, Man Don't Leave Me, White Palace, and so on. She followed these up by 1991 with the acclaimed movie Fried Green Tomatoes, in which she starred along with Jessica Tandy. In the film, she played the character of Evelyn Cooch. In 1992, she reprises her theater role in the film version of the play, The Road to Mecca. Other films released during this time included Prelude to a Kiss, Used People, A Home of Our Own, North, Curse of the Starving Class, and so on. In 1995, she played the titular character of Dolores Claiborne in the film adaptation of Stephen King novel Dolores Claiborne. Her performance in the film was much appreciated. While most of her films did well in the box office, the exceptional blockbuster performance seemed quite elusive. It was when she played the character of Molly Brown in James Cameron's flick Titanic, which was based on the sinking of the RMS Titanic in 1912, that the film broke all records chronicling a humongous $1.8 billion and more at the box office. Taking the success story forward, she played the character of acid-tongue political advisor Libby Holden in the film Primary Colors. 
Adapted from a book when political journalist Joe Klein gave an account of his experience on the presidential campaign trail, the film was a major success and earned her a nomination at the Academy Awards. Towards the end of the 1990s and beginning of the 2000 decade, she came up with several films as The Waterboy, A Civil Action, Bruno, American Outlaws, Dragonfly, and Love, Liza. She even did several television films like Annie and My Sister's Keeper and the short film Baby Steps. In 2002, she starred in the film About Schmidt, for which she gained her third Academy Award nomination. In the film, she was cast opposite Jack Nicholas. Following this, she was a part of the star cast of a number of movies such as Around the World in 80 Days, Unconditional Love, Failure to Launch, and Relative Strangers. Meanwhile, she did several uncredited roles and played various characters in short films, documentaries, television films, and miniseries, and so on. She gave her voice to a couple animated films like B-Movie, Charlotte's Web, The Golden Compass, and Christmas is Here Again. Other than acting, she diversified her established and highly successful career by wearing the cap of director for several television series such as Homicide, Life on the Street, NYPD Blue, Oz, Six Feet Under, and Everwood. She even went on to direct television films like Dash and Lily and Ambulance Girl. From 2010 to 2011, she took up a recurring role in the popular comedy series The Office. Subsequently, she starred in the legal drama Henry's Law, which lasted two seasons. She played the character of writer Gertrude Stein in Woody Allen's Midnight in Paris. In 2012, she made a guest appearance in the show Two and a Half Men on the episode Why We Gave Up Women as the Ghost of Charlie Harper. The role went on to earn her her first Emmy Award for Outstanding Guest Actress in a Comedy Series after nine nominations. In 2013, she starred in the third season of the American Horror Stories, Coven, as Delphine LaLaurie in The Immortal Racist. In her four and a half decades of career, she has won numerous prestigious awards in various categories. Some of the prominent awards won by her are Academy Awards, Golden Globe Awards, Screen Actors Guild Awards, Blockbuster Entertainment Awards, American Comedy Awards, Primetime Emmy Awards, and so on. Other than acting and directing, she chairs the Executive Committee Chair of the Actors Branch of the Academy Motion Picture of Arts and Sciences Board of Governors. As a teenager, Bates wrote self-described sad songs and struggled with bouts of depression. Bates was married to... Tony Campisi for six years from 1991 until their divorce in 97. Bates has battled ovarian cancer since her diagnosis in 2003. In September, 12, September of 2012, she revealed via Twitter that she had been diagnosed with breast cancer two months earlier and had undergone a double mastectomy. In 2014, at the New York Walk for Lymphedemia and Lymphatic Diseases, Bates announced via pre-recorded audio that due to the double mastectomy, she had lymphedema in both arms. That year, Bates became a national spokeswoman for lymphedema and chairperson for the Lymphatic Education and Researchers Network Honorary Board.